Welcome everybody. I'm uh, Alexander Schouten. I'm an assistant professor of business communication and digital media at Tilburg University. Um, in this video, I want to tell you a bit about one of our new projects within our department, which is called CSI Tilburg, which stands for Center for Social Influencers. So within our department, there are a bunch of people working on influencer research, um, specifically to promote healthy behavior and to investigate influencer effects on health behavior and also general well-being. And we decided to combine all our research and start discussing with each other about the projects we can set up and the grants we can acquire. And I want to explain to you a bit about our research and maybe you're interested and you want to help us develop our research and participate in our research uh, during your lab rotation. So you all know social media influencers. These are a couple of examples of social media influencers that I follow um, for obvious reasons. Um, the most of you know influencers from the pretty girls or guys who promote uh, health products or makeup or whatever. Uh, but those are not the only type of influencers, although they are the most well known. So increasingly influencers are used to also promote healthy behavior. So for example, this is, this is a Dutch influencer who talks about um, sexual health behavior um, uh, in her vlogs, uh, specifically aimed at teenagers and young adults, um, which does not have the same clout as some of the other influencers on the previous page, but still she reaches over 40,000 people with this video alone. Um, so influencers are you know, a special breed of people so because influencers are kind of in between celebrities and friends so if you follow influencers on instagram you see them as celebrities people you look up to possibly but they are also in your instagram feed so you also see them as people you might know so you kind of can develop parasocial relationships as it is called and see them more as peers than celebrities and those two factors so on the one hand they look like peers, and on the other hand, you look up to them, cause influencers to have huge effects on people's feelings and behaviors. So from marketing, we know that influencers have uh, more effect than celebrities uh, when they promote products. Um, the downside is that they also may affect um, social media users, their well-being. So especially adolescents and young adults are susceptible to it. And there is some research that's see some indication of a negative effect on well-being and self-esteem if people focus too much on influencers and social media. Um, so that's one effect we would like to study further in our research. The other one is that the upside then is that influencers, if they have such a huge effect, can also be used to promote healthy behavior. Um, so healthy eating, physical exercise, sexual education, smoking cessation, um, alcohol intake, etc. Um, up to now, influencers are mostly used for marketing commercial purposes, but studies are looking more and more into how we can use influencers to promote healthy behavior as well. So, for example, um, we are currently conducting a study in which we specifically look at uh, vlogs aimed at sexual health communication. And we are investigating what kind of strategies these influencers in these vlogs are using to promote sexual health behavior and how that results in engagement from their followers, such as likes, comments, such as discussion in the comments, etc. Um, in a further study, uh, we want to explain this further and investigate this further with experimental studies in which we investigate underlying processes that explain the effectiveness of social influencers. And we are currently working on writing a paper about um, the effects of uh, well-being, specifically the well-being of influencers, because influencers are affected as well by the need for them to be at their best all the time, to present themselves in the best way possible, to always be online. Um, so that's another um, example of one of the studies we are conducting. And we decided to combine all of our research into social influences within a department and something we uh, jokingly call the Center for Social Influences, which is not a real thing. Um, but it is a combination of a, a bunch of six, seven uh, researchers working together on um, uh, influencer research. 
So what you can do in your lab rotation, if you're interested in working with us, is the following. So we want your help in collaborating with us in developing your research, um, developing the theories we, uh, we use in our research, uh, developing our group and what we want to investigate further, what we stand for. Um, we want you to participate in ongoing research, so in basically all the um, aspects of scientific research from developing a theory to conducting a study to writing a paper. Uh, maybe if you want for lab rotation or other uh, courses in the research master, you could also develop your own project uh, within our center. Um, so if you want, feel free to contact uh, either me, I'm Alexander Schouten, or you can also contact Martijn, uh, who can then um, help you get you into contact with me. So thank you very much and good luck with your lab rotation.